Welcome into your Wednesday CTV Sports page. It's hump day, so we're kicking things off with some college basketball. The Big Ten ACC Challenge is underway, and Maryland is at Ohio State tonight as they will participate in the traditional clash between conference titans. Chris Marks was in College Park earlier this week to find out what the game plan is tonight for the Terps. After a 1-2 and two start, the Terps have now won four straight games, including winning the Paradise Jam Tournament with a victory over the Big East's Providence. The Terps now hit the road for the ACC Big Ten Challenge for the last time as members of the Atlantic Coast Conference. The opponent, Ohio State in Columbus. I think they have eight guys that are capable of scoring in double figures every night. Uh, Ross finally had a big game for him, made some shots. He hasn't been making shots, so he's a stretch him four. Um, you know, the one, two, and three can all score. Scott's shooting the ball better. We just have to know the scout and do our jobs. Um, we went over personnel today, and uh, they, they definitely got some good pieces. And if we can, you know, handle the pressure that the guards are going to put on uh, our guards defensively, then I think, you know, we'll, we'll have a good chance. For us, we're making them take jump shots overhand. They're missing them, and we're limiting them to one shot. That's really kind of get, that's how you got to play against them, I think, to beat them. If they're hitting jump shots overhands, they're going to be pretty tough to beat. It's obviously a, a really uh, you know good team we're playing, and you know it's, all road games are tough. But uh, you know, Coach Finale was joking. The Reds not much different, so uh, you know Comcast gets loud. Uh, I'm sure it'll be be really loud there, so we'll, we'll be ready to play. Everybody's got to be able to run their sets and handle it, you know, the best they can. So, um, but you know, they're they're going to they're going to test us, but. We knew that when the schedule came out. Um, we're much more prepared today than we were a month ago. So I'm looking forward to just kind of seeing where we are, you know, against a big time team and a big time environment. So the Terps game against the Buckeyes will be their biggest challenge yet. And again, their last as members of the Atlantic Coast Conference in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. When they play in this game next year, they will play a member of the ACC as a member of the Big Ten from the Comcast Center. This is Chris Marks, CTV Sports. Thank you for that, Chris. And as for the question of which conference is better, which is what the challenge is designed to answer, based on last night's games, the ACC and the Big Ten both, both boast three victories. The Saratsville Hornets had one of their best seasons to date this year, winning the school's very first regional championship. And unlike stereotypical teens who don't want their parents in their business, leave me alone, the Hornets quarterback not only couldn't escape his father, but neither could any of his teammates. Go! The relationship between a head coach and his quarterback is essential for a winning football team. But at Saratsville High School this season, the head coach and the quarterback were connected by more than just football. Coaches will say from time to time that, you know, you, you try not to coach your son like your son, but it, it's kind of hard, like you say, especially him being the namesake, being my blood. He, he knew coming in after his eighth grade year, if he was coming to be with me, that he was going to be coached hard. Quarterback Robert Harris III is in fact the son of head coach Robert Harris Jr. The two have been quarterback and coach combo now for three years. Now I'm so used to it, it doesn't even phase me no more. I'm, I'm just so used to it. And it, it's, it really, it's really better for me because it helps me become a better player, a better man. So I thank God for it. The quarterback hasn't been the only beneficiary of having Coach Harris around. This year, the Hornets finished the season 10-3 and, and clinched their first regional title in school history. I treat them the same. You know, Rob may get it a little tougher at times, but they all know that this tough love that comes from me is definitely love because expectations is high for all of them. I feel very fortunate. Not only is he my dad, but he's my, pretty much my whole team's dad. He, he gives all of them that father figure that they, they might not have at home. From the Harris home to the football field, this father and son duo have one more season together as Saratsville quarterback and head coach. We want to definitely make another ride next year with a lot more seniors because we're going to have a, a real heavy senior class next year. So we really want to make it happen next year too. But as the saying goes, what? blood is still thicker than water. It's been a great experience, you know, coaching my son. I, I can't even explain, put it into words, what, it re what it's really like. The Hornets, of course, will return a handful of seniors, and now that they've tasted some glory, the players and the coaches have no intention of turning back. The NFL has come down with its penalty for Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin's misstep during that game against the Ravens on Thanksgiving Day. The league fined Tomlin $100,000. The penalty may not stop there either. The Steelers could potentially lose draft picks behind all of this. St Tomlin released a statement earlier today. 
As I stated yesterday, I take full responsibility for my actions and I apologize for causing negative attention to the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. I accept the penalty that I received. I will no longer address this issue as I am preparing for an important game this Sunday against the Miami Dolphins. Yesterday, Tomlin said that he, the thought that he would do something like that intentionally, that is, interrupt a receiver, was ridiculous, and he maintains that he was just watching the game on the big board. Former Wizard head coach Eddie Jordan is in town tonight with his Rutgers squad as they take on a surging GW team. The Wizards and the Caps are both off tonight, but high school basketball is getting underway this week. DeMatha and Roosevelt will face off tomorrow. DeMatha, of course, a perennial power, and Roosevelt, the reigning Prince George's 4A champions. I'm Monica McNutt, and that's all I have for today's sports page.